My name is Benjamin Dome, and this is a presentation on robotic guidance in anterior hip replacement. In considering something new, our humility is clearly our greatest asset, and we must always consider that there's opportunity to improve. Uh, caveats of my perspective, I uh, have a very close attention to soft tissues in surgery and uh, then think about uh, the uh, muscle vectors and muscle tension around a, a total hip replacement. Uh, this uh, consideration of the soft tissues, I believe, is uh, part of what allows a hip replacement to feel like a normal hip and function like a normal hip. It's clearly highly dependent on the restoration of the spatial relationship between the femur and pelvis in three dimensions. Uh, so we have to look beyond combined version in, in considering this. Uh, some of the challenges in hip replacement include hip dislocations, one of the most significant complications in hip replacement today, limb length discrepancies, which are the primary cause of litigation following hip replacement in the U.S., uh, edge loading uh, due to uh, implant malpositioning uh, may cause linear fracture, wear, or leading to osteolysis, impingement leading to prosthetic loosening, and so forth, and ultimately restoration of the 3D relationship between the femur and the pelvis is critical to making the hip feel like and function like a normal hip. So x-rays and fluoroscopy are both two-dimensional uh, instruments and a two-dimensional of a 3D object can be deceptive. Uh, I'll demonstrate some ways it can be deceptive with respect to femoral uh, antiversion. So if you change the femoral stem antiversion, you change the relationship of the gluteus medius and other muscles around the hip to the pelvis. Uh, so if you decrease the femoral stem antiversion, uh, you move the uh, greater trochanter anteriorly and posteriorize the vector of the gluteus medius, and vice versa. If you uh, increase the antiversion, you move the greater trochanter posteriorly relative to the pelvis. So in contrast, if you change the cup version, you really don't change the uh, spatial relationship between the greater trochanter and uh, the pelvis. So changing this version uh, has no effect on that spatial relationship or on the muscle vectors. In contrast, if we change the femoral antiversion, we do move the greater trochanter in space, so we change this relationship. And you have to consider that if you change the antiversion, a patient is still going to position their leg so that their foot points straight ahead. Uh, so uh, with increased femoral antiversion, in order to keep their foot pointing ahead, they externally rotate, and that moves the greater trochanter posteriorly. So, this changes the vectors on, of the muscles across the hip joint. If we increase the antiversion, it causes a, a, an anteriorized vector. If we decrease the version, it causes a, a posteriorized vector of the muscle envelope around the hip. So looking at this on a model, uh, you can see on the left uh, is increased uh, antiversion and on the right is decreased antiversion. And if we look at the additional vector that that causes, Increased antiversion causes this anterior vector on the left, while decreased antiversion causes that posterior vector on the right. Here without the muscle envelope, same vectors. So moving on to the acetabulum, uh, the safe zone has been defined originally by Lewinick uh, as 5 to 25 degrees of cup version and 30 to 50 degrees of cup inclination. The modified safe zone by Callanan et al. Uh, was uh, uh, similar except the inclination was changed to 30 to 45 degrees, so it was narrowed uh, slightly uh, to limit it at 45 degrees of cup inclination. Uh, in an excellent study out of Mass General uh, in 2010, uh, about 1,800 patients uh, who had a hip replacement or hip resurfacing were uh, assessed uh, with post-operative radiographs looking for antiversion and inclination. And what they found was that only 47% of those patients fell within the safe zone. Uh, so 79% were in the safe zone for antiversion and 62% uh, were in for inclination, but in combination only 47% fell in that safe zone. Uh, so an excellent study. Uh, the goals then of using robotics are to make this better, uh, to, to be more precise and more accurate. Uh, this uses a 3D virtual pre-op pre implant planning system, a navigated stem placement, haptically guided acetabular preparation and placement, uh, and it allows us to assess combined version, hip length, and hip offset. Potential advantages include the use of the CT scan data uh, to create a virtual model of the patient 
and create a patient-specific surgical plan for optimal implant alignment and placement to act as a guide. More accurate positioning of implants uh, with the robotic guidance and 3D uh, visual feedback and real-time data may lead to a decreased likelihood of mechanical failure and improved outcomes. So the surgical workflow begins with planning and broaching the femoral stem, combined aniversion assessment, preoperative cup planning, robotic cup placement, and ultimately a quantified surgical report. The inputs are the patient's CT scan, uh, a 3D uh, virtual model is created. We size the implants, identify the center of rotation, and uh, de uh, define the version and inclination of the cup, as well as the native femoral version. Uh, in terms of planning the, uh, the stem, we uh, use the same inputs. Uh, we plan the height and offset of the stem in order to reproduce the uh, desired leg lengths and offset. We can assess the combined aniversion measurement, uh, and if the femoral version is uh, very low, for example, or if it's a retroverted femur, we may want to increase the acetabular cup uh, version to compensate for it. So our preoperative cup planning takes place after we've assessed the femoral version, and we have a complete visualization of the, the CT scan. We can uh, very accurately place the, the acetabular component, uh, which leads us uh, to very precise bony reaming, ultimately. And when we perform the reaming, we have visual feedback. Uh, it shows us green if we have more bone to take, or uh, uh, white if we've taken enough, red if we've taken too much. And there's also tactile feedback from the haptic stiffness. Uh, and lastly, audible feedback. It'll beep if we're off. Uh, so the haptics guides both reaming and impaction. And this has led to a very precise process and a, usually a single step reaming where we'll ream only with uh, one size. Uh, so we don't have to sequentially ream with this robotic system. The haptic restraints uses conical haptics on the left for the reaming, so we can actually ream from a variety of different approaches, uh, but all the while it keeps the basket in the desired location in space. When we go to the impaction of the cup, it switches over to linear haptics, uh, so it keeps us in the direct line of approach that will produce the version and inclination that we've templated. We've recently published a study in clinical orthopedics and related research assessing cup placement using a freehand technique versus the robotic guidance. And this was a prospective matched pair controlled comparison. We compared 33 uh, patients in each group. These were matched groups with a single surgeon, in this case a posterior approach. And we had two blinded observers who measured the aniversion and the inclination. X-ray measurements were all performed digitally. Looking at the similar scatter plots, uh, the red box uh, is Lewinix safe zone and the gray shaded area is Callinan's safe zone. On the left side you see the results using robotics and on the right side you see the results using the freehand technique. And what we note is that using the robotics we have a much tighter cluster. All of the uh, dots are within Lewinix safe zone in the robotics whereas they are not for freehand. And, uh, 85% of them are within the gray shaded area, Callinan safe zone for uh, robotics. Looking at this data in a different form, uh, we can look at the uh, average, the standard deviation, and the range. The black boxes are the robotics, and the gray boxes are the freehand technique. And what you see is that the standard deviation and the range are much tighter for the robotic system because we've increased the precision of placement. The percent of cups within Lewinix safe zone uh, was 100% for the robotic system shown in blue here, uh, as opposed to uh, almost 80% uh, for the uh, freehand technique. So this is the combined safe zone involving both aniversion and inclination. For Callinan safe zone, which is a tighter safe zone, we go from 55% in the red, the freehand technique to 85% in the blue, the robotic technique. So that means we've cut the number of uh, components that are outside of the safe zone from 45% to 15%. So that's a, a three-fold reduction in the number of components placed outside of Callinan's safe zone. So the MAKO approach resulted in very consistent acetabular cup positioning. 100% of the cups were placed within Lewinix safe zone and 85% were placed within Callinan's modified safe zone, and this was a very statistically significant improvement over the freehand technique. 
So in summary, the advantages uh, with regard to the cup are more accurate cup placement, not just involving version and inclination, but also the translational reaming and placement in space, avoiding anterior or posterior over reaming. A single step reaming process is possible uh, using only a single basket. And ultimately, we believe this results in taking less bone and using potentially a smaller cup. And if we think ahead to any potential revision in the future, uh, bone conservation obviously has great value. With regard to the femoral version, we have CT-based measurement of native version and the ability to measure the brooch version. Uh, those are things we never had uh, prior to robotics, and this is a very valuable data point to have. With regard to length and offset, if we can't see it, we can't uh, appreciate how to fix it, or you can't fix what you can't find. Uh, and this allows us to have uh, very uh, precise feedback as to the length and offset. Current work underway involves measurement of the accuracy of the MAKO readings uh, versus post-operative x-rays, length and offset accuracy, a large series comparing to fluoros fluoroscopic guidance, and development of a three-dimensional assessment tool. In improving our surgery, clearly our humility is our greatest asset. Thank you very much. My name is Benjamin Dome.